This is uh, Wright Buddy from Backroad Buddies of Red Tail Lodge. And today we're here in Broomfield, Colorado at our home um, since our spring plans got canceled because of COVID-19. However, that gives us the time now to um, explain a little bit and show you kind of what we've been working on in our van, the changes we're making for season two for 2020. Um, it's uh, there's quite a few changes, about three dozen or so, and I'll try to go through them somewhat quickly. Um, so hopefully I won't bore you too much. We kind of uh, been doing some big projects and some little minor ones, but we'll show them all to you. So hopefully you'll find at least one of them helpful or interesting. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started with change number one and that is installing an S-Bar heater. Um, we're planning on traveling a lot longer this year, hopefully if COVID-19 will cooperate. So we'll be in some shoulder seasons where it'll be a little cooler, so we wanted to make sure we had heat in the van, so we installed an S-Bar heater. Um, we installed it here. I don't know if you can tell, it's off on the driver's side um, still in the main living area but right in front of where the shelves before ended um, and it's down there on the floor it there's actually holes we had to drill in the floor of the van to connect it to the fuel pump and connect it into the Ford Transit gas tank and then we had to bring some wires over here. And this is the control panel that we turn the heater on and off with. And if you want more details on that, we actually have a whole video on the heater install. So I'll put a link to that heater install in the comments below or description below. The second major change we made was adding a WeBoost cell um, signal enhancer or amplifier and you can see up here this is the antenna the external antenna and then via wires and a hole through the roof we had to make it comes down to this uh, the actual device this we boost device that amplifies the cell signal and then it rebroadcasts it inside the van using this, if you can see it very well, this internal antenna which just rebroadcasts the cell phone signal inside the van. And hopefully that will give us an advantage this year. Um, we kind of struggled a little bit with that in season one um, because a lot of places we stayed didn't have a very good cell phone signal and we're hoping that this will help us out and get us more work done while we're on the road. Uh, likewise, we have a video on the install of the WeBoost and another video and I'll put that in a link in the description below as well. Change number three. While we had the solar panels detached doing the WeBoost install, we decided to raise our solar panels up by an inch and a half. And we did that by, let's see if I can show this to you, we added another layer of T-track underneath the supports to raise it up. And the reason we did that was because our max air fan, if you can see in, under there, is underneath our solar panels. And the way it was originally installed, we could the lid to the fan would only open about an inch and so that extra inch and a half lets that raise up a little bit higher 
let me turn the fan on and you can see how it raises up. Let's go ahead and turn it on here. So you can see it's got um, probably two and a half to three inches now. Let's look at it again from the outside. So you can see in there we've got a little more space now so we're hoping that will increase the efficiency of that fan because it'll get more volume of airflow through there. Change number four was adding these shelves above the S-bar heater there. Um, last season we, and we continue doing that this season, is most of our cooking is done here in this area behind the front seats and um, before you get under the bed and into the cargo area. And all we had before really was for storing our cooking and food supplies was this hanging cabinet. And then um, we did have this cabinet underneath the fridge and our cabinet underneath our sink, which actually does have quite a bit of storage for spices and canned goods and stuff. However, we still found that we were storing quite a bit of stuff in the back, in the drawers we'd built in the back, which isn't very efficient when you're up here cooking and you have to keep running to the back to get supplies. So um, we actually added this whole shelf unit. And if you notice, well, that's where our instant pot will be stored now, where before we had it up on the hanging shelf. And I'll talk about that in another little change coming up. Um, so we're hoping we can get most, if not all of our at least commonly used cooking supplies and food items stored up here where we actually do our cooking. Change number five. Um, last season, we traveled with the Ford Transit two-person passenger seat, um, which mounted right in this space here, which is where the new shelves are now. Um, we needed that last year because there was an occasion during our trip where we needed to haul two other adults and we wanted seats for them to travel with us. However, we don't foresee that this season, so we actually removed those um, factory seats. They are made to easily pop out anyway. Um, and so instead, we put those shelves in and in order to still have seating here, we have enough seating here. We built this white shelf here that runs between the electrical cabinet and the new shelves and S-bar heater that we put in. And that will give us a comfortable seat there, as well as we can also sit on the electrical box. So we still have seating there. It just doesn't take up as much room and we can use that space for other things. This will also make it easier to get into the cargo area because we don't have that seat back of the bench seat in the way to kind of squeeze past to get in the back if we need to. Change number six. Um, last season, well, we still have the lagoon table. However, when we built that, and if you go look at our video on that, and I'll post a link in the description below, we had this mounting system out of plywood that would hook into the hooks in the floor where the passenger seats hook into, the legs of those. Um, but the floor is a little bit more flexible than we thought it was going to be. We actually built it before we got possession of the van. And we, and when you put the, we have a four foot long tabletop that goes on there and and it's a little unstable to have that flex in the floor. So we actually changed how we mounted the table. We actually took the lagoon mounts and put a piece of plywood and attached it. I don't know if you can see very well in the lighting in here. Um, we attach that to the side of the electrical cabinet and it's a much more 
stable mount and it's also one that we can leave in place and we can even leave the table leg in place here and don't have to take it out and put it back in every time we want to use the table. So we think we're going to like that a lot better and it's a lot smaller we don't have to have this big contraption we have to store somewhere. So we're hoping that'll really solve a lot of issues. Change number six. Um, last season, well, we still have the lagoon table. However, when we built that, and if you go look at our video on that, and I'll post a link in the description below, we had this mounting system out of plywood that would hook into the hooks in the floor where the passenger seats hook into, the legs of those. Um, but the floor is a little bit more flexible than we thought it was going to be. We actually built it before we got possession of the van. And we, and when you put the, we have a four foot long tabletop that goes on there and, and it's a little unstable to have that flex in the floor. So we actually changed how we mounted the table. We actually took the lagoon mounts and put a piece of plywood and attached it I don't know if you can see very well in the lighting in here. Um, we attach that to the side of the electrical cabinet and it's a much more stable mount and it's also one that we can leave in place and we can even leave the table leg in place here and don't have to take it out and put it back in every time we want to use the table. So we think we're going to like that a lot better and it's a lot smaller. We don't have to have this big contraption we have to store somewhere. So we're hoping that'll really solve a lot of issues. Change number seven. Um, we travel with our bikes and we put them on a hitch mount on the back. And we noticed last summer that at, at least at one point we noticed a little bit of rust starting to form on the bike chains. Um, so we decided we needed to get a cover to try to get these bikes out of the weather because they're sitting out in all kinds of rain and dirt and slush coming up from the road. So we bought this cover here from, I think it's called Formosa Covers. Uh, so I've got it on here. I got our two bikes on under there. I don't have it on the swing away arm right now because I just wanted to test out the bike cover. But it looks like it fits. It looks like they've got lots of um, secure buckles to try to tighten it down. And uh, so far I'm happy with it. It's got kind of a little drawstring that tightens up around the actual hitch to try to prevent you know the wind from getting in there and things flapping around because that wind driving down the road can really play havoc on things if it kind of gets cut underneath there so we actually haven't put it to the road test so we'll report in later to see how this bike cover works out if it holds up or if there's issues with it we're hoping that'll protect the bikes from the weather change number eight um, we normally travel with a spare freshwater jug and a spare gray water jug. And that's where we normally had them. However, they would kind of, we did have them secured down with bungee cords, but they did kind of move around a little bit, especially when we were trying to pull the gear slide in and out and they would get caught on the shelf on the side. Um, so we came up with a little better of a solution um, Left Buddy made this wooden tray holder to hold them in there and it's secured down to the gear slide and these fit in there and they don't really move around much and then it's so much easier to pull them in and out and like everything else we've added to the van we've made sure that we can also then remove it so everything's modular if you notice it's bolted down to the T-track there um, but we're hoping that's a much easier solution and that keeps them nice and secure but actually makes it more convenient to get in and out. Change number nine. 
Similar to the water jug holder, we also made one for our clothes hamper because it's so light and it, if you see it's actually trying to collapse right now. Um, if we have clothes in it, it doesn't collapse. Uh, but it would, a lot of times when we would pull the gear slide out, that clothes hamper would just fall off all the time and it was rather a pain to deal with. So we added another little holder for that as well. Change number 10. Um, when we originally got our van, there was a T-track arm that held this fresh water tank in place. This is the one that's actually hooked up to the water pump. And there was a T-track arm that came across here and kind of latched into the side. So in order to change that fresh water tank, you had to unlock it and then this, because it was a stiff arm, it had to swing out. And if you notice that these two jugs are in the way from that arm swinging out. So we, every time we had to change that tank, we had to pull both of these jugs out in order to be able to get that tank out and put the new one in. Um, when we noticed that there's some other build outs by Van Do It that they were using a strap instead of that arm, that looked like a much better idea to us. So we actually um, copied that and put in this little strap and it was actually a rather simple change to do that. And the other end is secured. I don't know if you can see it. It's secured on the T-track. Maybe I can get it from this angle um, on the other side there. And that holds that in really well. Um, the other issue we were seeing with that arm is because it was stiff and had to be latched in, if you filled this tank to the very brim, it would kind of squeeze on that tank and water would come out and spill all over the van. So we had to be careful not filling it all the way. We don't have that same issue with the strap, so we're hoping that will be a much better solution. So thanks Van Do It. Change 11. Well this isn't really a change to the van, but just change to some of the stuff we travel with. Um, I found that I was carrying this smaller, just a regular size yoga mat, and I like to do this little stretching routine before I go to bed every night, and I found the yoga mat was really too narrow to do what I wanted to do and keep me off of the dirty ground of the campground and the dirt and gravel and sand. Um, so I just purchased a larger exercise mat, and that's just happens to be where we store it. So I'll have a, there's a link in our blog post if you want to see exactly what I got. Change number 12. Um, if you notice from videos from before, we talk about we had a um, shower curtain that went from the top here and went all the way down. In fact, this was part of what was originally there, the black one there. Um, that went all the way down to the bottom there. Um, so we did that to help protect, because our bedding's behind here. We did that to protect our, our bedding in case we needed to open up the back and it was raining. We didn't want our bedding to get wet and then having it go all the way down helped protect any water from getting into the cargo area of the van. And if we wanted to use our little spray nozzle here as an outdoor shower or to wash off some muddy gear, we can do that without worrying about it um, splashing back into the van. However, we got to thinking about if we're sleeping in there um, in the middle of the night and what I didn't explain is that long one, in order to keep it out of the way, most of the time we just tucked it underneath the bed here, but that was quite a bit of material tucked under the bed. And so we were thinking if for some reason we need to get out of the van in a hurry in the middle of the night and we sleep with our heads up at this end, um, being able to get past that curtain and untuck it would have been really difficult. And we also originally had it strung on a, um, on a rope that was tied off on each end of this 
T track up here. And if and it was these the rope was going through these grommets. So in order to detach it from the top, we'd have to untie the rope and and pull it down that way. And we thought that's just not a very um, good idea if we really need to get out, you know, the there, you know, the other way's blocked. There's a fire, or you know, some someone or something's breaking into the van in the front um, to be able to get out quickly. So what we did was we bought another shower curtain, and this one's called a hookless. If you notice, um, we can pull it off right off of the. Um, well, in this case, it's a bungee cord. Just pull that right over, it comes off the top. We also don't have it tucked in very far, so we think we can untuck it. Um, and then because it's a bungee cord, we should be able to quickly release it on the end. So there's multiple ways of getting past that shower curtain in the middle of the night when you're groggy and panicked. We didn't want that to be a barrier of getting out. And then we still kept the other shower curtain. So in the cases where we are going to um, use this as a outdoor shower or spilling off things, we can still um, pull this out, hook it up underneath, um, and still, oh, we've got some threads there, um, and still have that protected from getting it wet inside the van. Change 13 kind of along the same lines as that scenario of trying to get out of the bed in the middle of the night. Um, we solved the issue with the curtain in change 12 and change 13. We still had an issue with being able to open the rear doors from the inside. There is this little emergency pull that will open the doors. However, um, we normally sleep with the bed up at this level and with it up that high, we cannot reach that handle from the bed. So what we did is we took a piece of paracord and we kind of attached it to the side with these little command hooks and then this um, little cord holder. So that kind of holds it in place and now all we now this is easily reachable from the bed and we can just pull up on that and that will open the doors in an emergency. Change 14, kind of continuing that emergency theme here. Um, we thought it would be handy to have a shovel with us in case we get stuck in the mud or the snow or the sand or whatever, um, or for any other reason. So we bought this lightweight um, portable shovel. It breaks down into three pieces. Let's see if I can do this one-handed here. Maybe not, but um, so yeah, this comes apart in three pieces, which are easy when you have two hands to do it with. Um, and then it stores in this little convenient little pouch and fits in the bin in the back. Change number 15. So in order to have something convenient for a nightstand, um, this is our bed here. We normally sleep with our heads down at that end. So finding something to put, you know, some Kleenex or cough drops or your cell phone or whatever um, at night was a struggle. Um, last year I hung a little stuff sack from the T-track, but you know, you bump into it. It was kind of hard to get things in and out of it in the middle of the night. So um, actually we were watching a video on a channel called From She to Me, which is another RVer. Um, and she was interviewing someone who had a van that had these little um, net pouches with Velcro and the Velcro would stick to this fuzzy headliner all by itself. Um, so you don't have to put any holes in the headliner or, you know, stick anything to it. And these hold really well. We've been testing it out, putting somewhat heavy things in here. Um, so we're planning on using that not only as a nightstand on both sides of the bed, 
maybe one or two of them depending on what we want to put up there and maybe even a putting a couple of them here above the sliding glass or sliding glass <laughs> the sliding door to the van um, and it's a nice little convenient pouch to keep things handy in okay change number 16 um, we modified our clothes line design um, Last year we just strung a bungee cord from along underneath the bed here along the T-track and we hung our our towels from there which worked great to get the first towel that was closest to kind of the, what we call the living space but it made it really difficult to reach um, the towels or whatever we had hanging further back so we changed it to use a rope and we ran it through an eye bolt and now we have kind of more of a old-fashioned um, clothesline that we can pull back and forth and get to the items that are in the back rather easily change 17 um, we found this nice little um, hanging organizer and we originally bought it to hang from the back of the bench seat that was here because it was a good size for that but since we removed that bench we actually hang it here along the side from the t-tracks and it fits kind of in between the two rails there of the bed and what we were hoping to use this for is we have slippers and our flip-flops that we use for shower shoes um, and other little things we can put in there but we wanted to pull those out of we originally had them in our our main shoe bin but we wanted to pull them out separate so they would stay clean and dry and um, be rather easy to find and pull when you're trying to grab your flip-flops as you're heading for the shower so and this is a good location for it we feel because it's it is blocking the shelf below but it's a shelf that we don't access very often because it's where our um, hot water heater is and our tool bag which we don't access very often so we think that's a great spot for it change 18 um, now that our bench seat situations changed a little bit the amount of space under here is is changed dimension wise and we found a a tote that we already had in the house that we weren't using this is a 28 quart fits underneath there pretty nicely um, the gray tote that we originally had will fit over here however it blocks the vent coming out of the s-bar heater so we need to yet find another another tote that'll fit in that space and not block the heat so we haven't done that yet but we'll get to it okay change number 19 was on the electrical cabinet this plastic is not real slick but um, it's not real grippy either so we added uh, a couple strips of this non-slip tape um, if you go to the corresponding blog post on our website and I'll put a link in the description below there will be links to all these things that I'm talking about so you can find them for yourself if you care to know and we did that both on the lower kind of step and the upper step we use the electrical cabinet to step up into the bed and um, we also use it as a seat so having it a little grippier is a good thing there's focus okay we're using the stadium seats for extra seating in the van um, this brontide is one that I researched online I wanted to make sure I had something that gave good back support especially since we took out that factory bench seat we wanted to make sure that we had um, at least two very comfortable seats in the van the first one being of course um, this seat that rotates around and then the second one will be this brontide with good back support and so it can either be on this shelf 
and the, or this bench, which um, sits rather low, but we did that so we wouldn't be um, bumping our head on the underside of the bed. And then we can also use that on the electrical box if we want to sit up a little higher and it might be a little more comfortable um, working on the lagoon table from there. Um, but then every now and then you might want to sit with your feet stretched out straight a little bit more where the lower seat would would be um, a change of pace and might help if we get stuck in the van for hours or days due to bad weather. And then we also have, we've had these for quite a while. These are the Crazy Creek. Um, they don't provide quite as much good back support, but you know, as an extra little seat, it can go, you know, in both of those places as well. If we both wanted to sit on the same side and watch the same YouTube video or something, we do have that option and we'll have two Crazy Creek um, stadium seats with us. Um, and those can be used not only inside the van, but outside the van as well, you know, at a picnic table or something along those lines. Change number 21 was making a cover for our lagoon tabletop. Pull it out here so you can see it a little better. Um, so um, I was trying to save money. And so I made this cover out of a moving blanket and with a little Velcro and some binding tape there. And I'm not the best seamstress in the world, but this should work. Um, last year we just used a fleece blanket and wrapped it around it, but it was kind of cumbersome and um, would fall off. And so we hope that even though this moving blanket's a really cheap material, I couldn't even tell you what material it's made out of because it wouldn't didn't even list the contents of it. This black side back side I think is some kind of plastic or synthetic because I I tried using an iron even on a really low setting and it just instantly melted and stuck to the iron. So I would not recommend this material but we're hoping it'll hold up and last us at least for a while. But I may have to replace that in the future but we're hoping this will work in the meantime. Change number 22. Um, with the leftover material from the lagoon table cover that I made out of the moving blanket, I made a cover for our instant pot. If you notice, it's just a simple little um, rectangle that wraps around and closes with Velcro to help protect it. I originally made that because last year we had the Instant Pot up here on our hanging shelf and the Instant Pot is just a little bit wider than the hanging shelf so it rubbed up against the headliner as you can see here and then these bungee cords actually rubbed up against the controls of the Instant Pot and you could see a little wear on there. Um, let's see if I can show you that. Yeah, you can, if I can get it to show up here. Yeah, you see there's a little bit of wear on there. So that was the main reason I made the cover, but now that we have it down here on this lower shelf, it's probably not as big of an issue, but yeah, I made it, so I'll probably use it and I'll probably keep it from banging or rubbing against anything and hopefully reduce any damage that might occur. Change number 23 is down here on the floor. Um, there's you can see here there's these holes in the floor where the factory bench seats hook into and you notice that um, Left Buddy took a couple layers of scrap of rubber and super glued them together and filled in those holes because you walk over that in your bare feet and it's not very comfortable plus we'd get dust and dirt and maybe small things would drop down in there and it's hard to get back out. And then in addition we got a sheet of this 
rubber mat flooring that we put on top and that just makes a more comfortable surface to walk on in your bare feet if, and it'll also give us another layer of insulation there to keep things a little warmer on our tootsies. Change number 24. Um, when we travel, this is our sink is here um, and we normally hang our toiletry kits on a hook from the tea track up here and that's where we normally have our washcloths and before we would either you know kind of tuck it in the hook or in the strap here but it would kind of fall and kind of get in the way so what we did was we added a grommet to the corner of our washcloths, so now we can hang it from the carabiner. It has a nice place to hang. It's not particularly in the way, and it can dry out there. Okay, change number 25 is up above the sink here. We originally had um, a TV mounted, and it would fold up out of the way and that was installed by Van Do It. And what kind of surprised us is we decided to take that out. This is where the wires came in to connect to it. Um, and we pulled that out mainly because, for one, it was mounted a little high. If we were sitting um, down and trying to watch it, it you're kind of angled up looking at it, and it just wasn't very comfortable to do for long periods of time. Not that we would watch television for long periods of time. Um, but we originally thought we wanted it so I could edit my photos and video up on a large screen, but that turned out to not be very comfortable and I actually got used to working on my laptop all the time. So that wasn't a big deal, but why we took it down was mainly because this is right above where our sink is, where when we're standing doing dishes or brushing your teeth or whatever. And if you notice that the roof starts angling down here. So having this TV here took away from our headroom and we're both six feet tall. So we we decided that we wanted the headroom more than we wanted the TV, so we pulled it out. Change number 26. Um, I mentioned this before in our tips and tricks video from season one. But I'll mention it again. I explained it in a little more detail in that video if you want to go take a look at it. Um, we kind of struggled with how to carry fresh f fruits and vegetables because you put them in a drawer or anywhere. They bang around as you drive down the road and they get damaged and bruised and break open. And so we kind of struggled with that for a little bit. So the best solution we came up with was this hanging net bag. And this seemed to be the best spot for it, which is where our TV was, but it's enough to the side of the sink that it's not in the way of headroom. And it's so uh, our fruits and vegetables just hang in there and swing around and don't bang against anything and get damaged. Um, we actually haven't traveled with it yet, so we'll report back later and we're pretty sure that's going to work. Change number 27 is a real simple thing. Um, this cord which we hang our kind of privacy curtain, it's also an insulating curtain, um, across here. It's kind of hard to get this rope tied tight so that the curtain when you have it closed doesn't sag in the middle. So we just ran the rope through an eye bolt here in the T-track and that helps support it in the middle. Change number 28, kind of going along with the curtains here. Um, we added these command hooks to hold the uh, tie backs and we also use it um, to kind of make sure this curtain kind of gives us the maximum privacy if you notice it kind of it kind of curves in here so that kind of helps helps close off the area a little bit better. We originally wanted to use command hooks when we first put these curtains in last season. However, we struggled with getting the command hooks to stay on this kind of textured plastic surface. 
And what we have discovered since then is we replaced the adhesive on the command strip with, um, I think it's called Scotch Extreme Mounting Tape. And that seems to do the trick. And hopefully that'll hold up for the season. Change number 29. Um, these are our window shades that we have for all our windows that we made. And there's a video that covers how we made them and how we use them. Um, but we had some issues with some of them not staying in. There were a friction fit. So we actually added some Velcro. If you see, I attached the Velcro right to the window um, in a couple spots and then um, attached the corresponding other side to the fabric of the window shade. And that holds it in place so it doesn't fall out for some of those problem window shades that we had issues with. The Velcro we used, there was the one, one half that we put on the actual shade itself was Velcro that was designed to go on to adhere to fabric. And then we used general purpose Velcro for the Velcro that we stuck onto the window itself. So it's actually two different Velcro products that we just had to make sure we matched up the, the appropriate side of the Velcro with each other because they were from two different rolls of Velcro. Change number 30. For the shades that go in the front doors, we, did, we didn't do Velcro because I didn't want Velcro stuck on the windows of these windows because I thought it would block our visibility looking out. So we actually tried doing magnets because if you notice that there is exposed metal here on these doors unlike the other windows in the van in the back. Um, so tried super gluing these on the fabric here but that didn't really hold and we tried super gluing it to the edge um, on the other side of the fabric. So it kind of reduces the magnet strength a little bit. But all we really needed is for it to hold in place while we open the door. Because when we actually shut the door, these shades stay in place because um, they're kind of uh, wedged in the door. So they won't fall out while the door's closed. It was just a pain when you'd open and close the door for some reason to get in and out of things and the shade would fall out. So we just wanted something that would hold. Um, so I tried doing the super glue on this one. On the other one, I just switched to um, just using duct tape to hold it in place. And again, it, it uh, reduces the strength of the magnet, but as long as it can hold for the brief moment that we have the door open and then it because uh, it's not an issue when the doors close so if you notice I just um, there's a magnet underneath the duct tape there and so you see it's not a very strong hold but we don't need it to hold for very long so we'll see how that works out um, our guess is um, these shades of, you know, got us through one season and we're hoping they get us through season two. And probably after that point, we'll probably go and purchase uh, professionally made shades. But we were just trying to save a little money up front because we're a little tight starting out here because we didn't uh, plan this years in advance. We just kind of jumped into it with both feet. So hopefully that'll get us through this next season. Change number 31. These are little um, vents to go in the front window of the front door. And we have one for each side. And these are nice little vents. You notice they've got like a little screen. So this window's rolled up here. And so that allows to 
get some fresh air, more airflow inside the van, but you still want to have the van secure. So that is kind of nice and it just just kind of slides up in there here if I can demonstrate. So I'm going to roll it down. You roll the window down and these just they just kind of sit right up there in the window track. Nice little convenient little vents. And you can find the links to those in our blog post and information is down in the description of the video. And last but not least is change number 32. This is a real simple one, but I'm sorry I didn't think of doing it sooner. If you notice on the key fob, there's a button to unlock and a button to lock. And I don't know about you, but my eyes are a little aging. And those, you notice one's green and one's red. That wasn't originally true. They were both white like the button is up here. And there's not a lot of difference between those two symbols. When you don't have good eyes and I don't have my reading glasses on or it's low light, I could not for the life of me tell the difference between those two buttons and I would struggle. And so after a whole season of being frustrated of trying to figure out which button to push when I'm entering or leaving the van, just got a little too much. And so what if I just take a little permanent marker and I just colored those red and green and it's worked beautifully. I'm really surprised. Even in low light, I can just at a glance figure out which button's which. And uh, that's really been a, a really nice but simple addition. Um, that's it for the changes we've completed so far. We've got a couple things that we have yet to do yet. Um, this right here is a fairing that we plan to install. This is from Colorado Fairing Company. So that will go, once we get it installed, will go up here on the front of the rack there. And then there are some, at least there's at least one major scratch in our windshield. So we have this um, glass polishing kit that we just need to do one of these days to get that scratch out of the windshield because it's right where we like to mount the GoPro camera. So you'd see a scratch in all the videos. So we're trying to fix that for you. Um, and then the only other remaining project we have on our list is to tint the side windows here um, just to reduce the amount of heat that builds up in the van when it's sitting parked or when we're driving down the road and that sun's beating in on us. So we hope to have that done before we hit the road and hopefully we'll hit the road in June. That's all I wanted to show you for today. Hopefully you found some of that interesting or helpful or whatever. Um, so we're hoping that we still will be hitting the road on June 1st. And at that time, once we get everything loaded up and figured out where everything's going to go in the van for this year, we'll do a proper van tour so you kind of see what it looks like when we're all loaded up and on the road. So that, so look for that to be coming in June. And in the meantime, if you like this video and haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. That really helps us a lot. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the road this summer. And if not, uh, please stay safe out there. And uh, hopefully we'll come through this whole COVID-19 thing okay and um, move forward. So ta-ta for now.